Eventually, you'll want to strip the pitch off of your lap. Uh, maybe you finished the mirror. Or maybe it's not working right. Maybe you've had an accident with it. Or I've had my wife lay a wrench on top of my lap. Uh, sometimes guys will get their lap stuck uh, in hot pressing. Uh, and for that matter, I always recommend pressing with a layer of plastic film between your uh, mirror and your lap. I also reuse pitch, and there's no problem in doing that, except that I have to check the hardness of the pitch because it gets harder with time, and I'll add uh, solvent to it to make it softer, but only a little at a time because it's a lot easier to make it softer by adding solvent and then try to make it harder by boiling the uh, solvent back out. Um, you have to have the right hardness of pitch for your laps and um, you have to have the right hardness at the temperature you're working at. And uh, I've got a couple of laps here that, have, that are, um, I've used in the past and they're old. And what happens with pitch over time is that the solvents in it evaporate out and it gets harder. And um, to measure the hardness, I made up this little gauge. It's a, basically a dial indicator with a tip that I brought down to a, a flat point, maybe 50 thousandths on the end. And I measure different pitch uh, hardnesses that I've had. Uh, all from Google's 91, which is hard, all the way down to uh, Swedish Pitch 64, or even uh, Google's 55 is pretty uh, pretty soft too. And uh, with this little holder, I can just set it down on my lap and see how fast the um, dial moves. And uh, You can see with this lap, it's hardly moving. It's, which means this lap is very hard. And this is outside, and in my basement's even cooler, so this is this lap is needs to be stripped off. Now I've got another. This is another lap, and it, this kind of shows what happens with time. They actually. Um, uh, it, the pitch facets actually get wrinkly, and this is a uh, burgundy, um, not burgundy, uh, Swedish pitch 64, and it um, it has aged too and gotten harder. And if I set my gauge down on it, you can actually see it moving a little. Uh, what is that? It moving slowly, and I time it for for a minute to see how uh, how much it moves in a minute. And I've already measured this lap, and it's it's reading about uh, one and a half um, one point four thousands in a minute, which puts it in hardness of Google seventy three. But actually, it's, it's, it's a Swedish pitch. It's it's uh, a lot harder than it should have been, which is about six and a half thousands per minute. So if if this if this if I got a pretty decent reading on this lap, I could reuse it. I could repress it and use it for another another lap. But both of these laps are basically old and, and hard, especially for the temperature that I'm working in my basement. So I'm going to strip these laps and um, need to do it uh, to strip a lap. You want to do it outside because this is a really messy job and uh, not not the hard part of the day either. It's a good idea to have uh, rubber gloves too because the pitch will, powder will just get everywhere and get on it. Um, once I even got a piece of pitch stuck up under my watch it actually caused a pretty good burn so you want to be careful with um, working around pitch. But anyway, strip it's pretty easy. Um, first I took a lap and I took a wire brush and I 
I scrubbed out the uh, polish and the grooves. You want to have you want to have some grooves in it. If it's not, uh, if you don't have any grooves, then you want to uh, rechannel your your lap because it, it comes off easier that way. So um, to take the pitch off, I use a, a one inch uh, chisel. And you start from the edge and you just put it down in the groove and you just twist it and they'll, if you do it right, they'll just break right off like so. And just deal it on the outside. So I've, uh, Strip all the pitch off of this, and um, there's a little bit of you get a little bit of pitch residue that you can knock off with the with a chisel. But you want to be careful that you don't uh, uh, take too much of you know you don't want a lot of particles of uh, plaster in with your pitch. So I cleaned up my pitch and added it to my pitch pot. Um, and that was a Swedish pitch, which is a pine tar pitch. You don't want to mix it with the uh, Googles, which is a uh, asphalt or um, uh, an asphalt-based uh, pitch. I'll need to add a little bit of um, turpentine to it, and then I'll, I'll um, use my little gauge and pour a little a dab of it and let it. Uh, cool in my basement where I'm going to use it and then check the, the hardness on my using my gauge. So now I'm going to attack this. This is a 16 inch lap I need to strip. Let's see how this goes. Actually, not as gone as well because I don't have it channeled as deeply as as my other lap was. Actually, you know, <laughs> it's not going actually all that well. So I probably will going to go back and take a knife and rechannel this lap so I can get down deeper. Then these will come off easier. Well. Rather than rechannel that, which was taking time, I decided to do it just a little differently. Um, this is a nice thick lap, so I just take a chisel and take take a hammer to it. And it breaks them off pretty well too, so. They just break right off. And I'm not going into the, uh, because it's not channeled, I'm not actually going into the uh, plaster so I'm just still pounding on the pitch yeah, it works real well And when I'm done, take a chisel and just take off the thick areas.
got quite a pile of pitcher that I could reuse. 